Welcome to module three of NAND to Tetris, in which we are going to discuss high-level programming in languages like Java and Python. However, we will not discuss these languages directly. Instead, we'll deal with a Jack language because we want you to participate in this fascinating process of not only using a high-level language, but also designing it from scratch and writing a compiler for it. And that's exactly what we'll do in NAND to Tetris. We'll build a language, Jack, from the ground up. However, in this module, we'll provide a top-down description of this language. And in general, here's the big picture of the course. Um, and here is also the agenda of, uh, of what uh, we should expect from now on. This is the beginning of the end of the course. And we see that in the next two modules, in module uh, four and five, we are going to build the Jack compiler. And in the following module, we're going to build uh, an operating system from the uh, Hack Jack uh, framework. And therefore, it makes a lot of sense to begin by learning Jack because Jack is going to play a dominant role in uh, everything that we do from now on. We're going to write a Jack compiler and also the operating system that uh, accompanies Jack is going to be written in Jack itself. You know, just like the operating system which accompanies C, Unix is written in uh, the C programming language. All right, so uh, with that in mind, let us uh, uh, review once again some uh, Jack code that we saw at the introduction module uh, uh, to the course. There's no need really to read the code or try to understand it. We'll uh, show many uh, more examples uh, later on in the module. For now, I just want to observe by looking at this code that Jack is a simple Java-like language. If you wrote programs in Java, everything should look kind of uh, familiar. It has some peculiar syntax, which we will explain later on. It is an object-based language with no support for inheritance. It is a multi-purpose language that can be used to design any application that comes to your mind. It lends itself nicely, in particular, to simple interactive uh, uh, apps like Tetris, uh, Snake, uh, Space Invaders, uh, and so on. And it can be learned, and I should add also unlearned, in about an hour, which is extremely important because Jack in itself is not uh, 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 an end, uh, but rather uh, uh, a means through which we're going to learn a lot about uh, how to write a compiler and how to write an operating system. All right, so uh, the take-home lessons of this module uh, are many. Uh, first of all, you will learn how high-level languages are designed and, uh, uh, and implemented. Uh, we will learn how to handle uh, primitive and, and class uh, uh, types behind the scene. Uh, how to create, represent, and uh, dispose objects. Uh, and, you know, this will give you a lot of insight about, you know, all sorts of possible bugs like uh, uh, stack overflow and uh, 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 memory leaks uh, and so on. Uh, we'll learn how to deal with uh, uh, strings and uh, collections like uh, arrays and uh, lists. And we will also learn how the high-level language interacts with the host uh, operating system, as well as many more uh, uh, things about uh, high-level languages. In addition, you will continue to develop your uh, programming skills. We'll uh, uh, write uh, a non-trivial program using the Jack language. And uh, we will continue to discuss this uh, super important abstraction implementation principle, which uh, uh, sort of is, uh, is uh, threaded uh, throughout uh, uh, the NAND to Tetris uh, courses. Jack is by and large a self-explanatory language, and therefore I think that the best way to introduce it is to see some examples. So we'll go through four examples, and in each one I will use the example in order to uh, introduce some features of the language. So let us start with uh, Hello World. And Hello World is a program that we saw before. If we execute it, we get uh, this uh, very imaginative uh, text, Hello World, uh, on the screen. But for now, what I'd like to observe is that in Jack, we have three kinds of comments. Uh, we have uh, API comments, which uh, can be processed by some uh, external uh, tool like uh, Javadoc. I mean, we could have written a, a similar Jack, uh, Jackdoc uh, tool. Uh, we have uh, block comments, which are delimited by uh, 
these two delimiters, and we have inline comments which are used for internal uh, documentation. In addition, we have white space. You know, we can use as many uh, space characters as we want in our code, and we exploit this uh, uh, white space and the fact that it's ignored by the compiler in order to use indentation. And indentation, of course, is super important in order to help us uh, make sense of our code and the code of other programmers. All right, moving along, let's see another example of a Jack program, a more uh, interesting one. And this program uh, wants to read a set of numbers and compute their average. Now, in order to illustrate this program, uh, we need uh, an output device. So here it is. So uh, let's start to look at the code. We begin by declaring uh, a bunch of variables, an array variable called A and uh, three uh, integer variables. And then we go on to ask the user how many numbers you do you want to enter? And the user says uh, uh, three, or let us assume that the user says uh, three. Uh, well, based on this information, we construct uh, an array of size uh, three, we set some variable to zero, and then we enter a loop in which we continue to prompt the user to enter numbers. Uh, let us assume that the user entered uh, the numbers uh, 12, eight, and five. And uh, let's see, the average of uh, 25 is uh, uh, 8 point something. And uh, indeed, when we print uh, the average, we get the result uh, 8, which makes sense because in Jack, uh, uh, or in this program and in Jack in general, we deal only with the uh, integer uh, data types when it comes uh, to numbers. So uh, what we've seen here is an example of uh, procedural processing. Nothing here is uh, super interesting. It is very similar to any other language that uh, you played with uh, in the past. But still, uh, we can make uh, some important observations. Okay, first of all, a Jack program or a Jack application is defined as a collection of classes, uh, one or more classes, and one of these classes must be called main. And uh, within this main class, there should be at least one function, and this function uh, must be called uh, main with the lowercase m, and this main.main .main serves as the entry point to the uh, Jack application. So if you had this class uh, residing in some uh, directory or folder on your computer, along with some other classes, if you would tell the runtime system to execute this directory, it will start executing everything from main.main. .main. All right, moving along, uh, we see that we have uh, control structures. And indeed, uh, the Jack language provides control structures like if, while, and uh, do. And uh, obviously, whenever you want to do something meaningful, you have to use uh, uh, these, these uh, structures. Uh, we also see that we have array processing. And uh, in Jack, arrays are implemented as instances of an array class, which is part of the host uh, operating system. And uh, interestingly, Jack arrays are not typed, so they can contain any value uh, of, of any type that uh, you can think of in, within the very same uh, array, which is a little bit peculiar, but um, uh, we will use it in all sorts of interesting ways uh, down the road. Uh, what else do we see here? We see that we have some operating system calls, right? And um, uh, methods like keyboard.readint and uh, uh, output.print screen and so on. Well, these methods belong to the host operating system and we can use them uh, at will in our uh, Jack code. And we'll have a lot to say about this uh, down the road. What else? Well, we also have uh, data types. And if we focus on these uh, three lines of code, we see that we have primitive data types like int uh, that appears in this uh, program. And in other programs, you will see more data types like uh, car and boolean. And we also have some uh, class types, or we may have class types like uh, the array uh, class that I uh, mentioned before. This is also a legitimate uh, type in um, uh, in Jack programs. So in Jack programs, you will often see uh, class types which uh, come from the operating system, but uh, the programmer is free to invent as many more classes and class types as uh, 
he or she pleases. And in this sense, uh, Jack has an unlimited uh, data typing uh, uh, capability. All right, so this is uh, the end of uh, this unit. Uh, throughout the unit, we saw two uh, very simple examples of uh, Jack programming. And in fact, what uh, we saw is how uh, an object-oriented language can be used to write code that has no objects and no object orientation, uh, but just you know, very simple, plain uh, sequential processing. In the next examples, we'll, uh, we'll begin to, to push the limit on uh, uh, what can be done with uh, uh, object-based programming, uh, beginning with the next unit.